I just feel like you're gonna like quiz me on like difficult stuff or no not at all it will be me and you down the pub nice conversation i've just love brought it. you a gin and tonic and you're a happy bunny right yes love it okay <laughs> is that the Cheers. world you, you can live with that yeah first of all i plead innocent of all charges talk about the good times with talking elvis Hello, welcome to episode 38. Yeah, 38. We're nearly we're nearly at 40 greatest. Uh Elvis 38 on Talking Elvis the podcast. And here's me old buddy. Good afternoon, everybody. Ian here is here again. Ian is in the building. I am Thank indeed. you. And good yeah. night. How is it how is it with you? Well, I've had my second jab. So yes. Uh, so I'm invincible now, so that's good. Uh, um, me too. <laughs> yeah, and you know the little chip in my neck has made me Wi-Fi loads better, so that's good. <laughs> it's actually, uh, it's, it was all right actually because I got lost the other day and, and it came up on me sat nav where I was. So, uh, <laughs> so this little chip that's floating around us now after the jabs is, is really working well. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? Well, a good show, thirty-seven. Got lots of reaction from that, didn't we? It, it, it's a very British thing. It's mm. great because we had reaction of. What the hell are you guys doing? To um, <laughs> to oh yeah, I loved them, wasn't it? <laughs> Absolutely was, yeah. And uh, and and some of us probably even went to your Spotify uh, playlists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many did you did you play before you you gave up? Probably about four or five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard work, isn't it? It, it really is. is. It, it is. really is hard work. Well, um, but good fun. Good. Fun. But very very good fun. Tony out there in Radio Land. It was a uh, very big fan of the. Uh, of buying his peanuts from behind the bar. Yes, yeah, so that was that was very much <laughs> in, his, in his comments. Yes, I think it's another shocker, but it, it, it opened a can of worms because I started getting people sending me album covers from all <laughs> sorts of other MFP, LVC things. And oh, wow, brilliant. It just went from bad to worse. <laughs> I, say, I say hello to Doug as well. He was listening and... Uh... <laughs> he wanted he wanted to, to know where your your Spotify playlist was. So uh, uh, give us a, give us a shout, Doug, and see and s- let us know how many you listened to before you switched <laughs> it off. <laughs> yes. Nice one, Doug. Yes, thank you, Doug. Doug, what'd you call a man with a shovel on his head? Doug, thank you very much. <laughs> I'll give me coat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, any news and views from your uh, your side uh, of the Elvis world? I've got one or two things now. Uh, for the likes of me, not for the likes of you, though is something very, very exciting happening at the end of this next week Um, in Europe is the European Football Championships. So uh, that'll be that'll be you sort of trying to get any anything out of me for the next three or four weeks other than an analysis of the 14 football matches I just watched yesterday. Um, But there's um, there's a uh, uh, online betting company in France um, and they've done an advert for the upcoming, you know, to get people betting on the European Championships. It's a very strange advert as well. But it's got If I Can Dream as the soundtrack oh. to it. And the original Elvis, If I Can Dream. So that's uh, very strange. If you can search, um, it's probably on YouTube by now or something. Yeah, I should uh, called, and it's And it's just simply If I Can Abuse. <laughs> You have a look at it. It's a very strange advert, but it's it's, it's got Elvis ripping all the way through it. So that's. Uh, oh well, that's... I'll, I'll uh, try and put that on the Facebook page if I can find it. Out yeah, there. It's, it's good. It's good stuff. I'll I'll send you a link if if I can if you can't. No, find nice it. one. Do do your own work. That's it. Good in, lad. Indeed. Well done. Tick tick tick, tick me G. Right. And, just... and also in in Tupelo in Tupelo in Mississippi, Elvis was stolen. Did you see that? Oh yes. So tell us more. <laughs> yes. Now, in, on the wall leading up to the birthplace in Tupelo, Mississippi, it says Elvis Presley um, Museum, uh, birthplace museum and chapel, doesn't it? And the Elvis Presley is a signature Elvis. So it's like Elvis would have signed it. And somebody's nicked the Elvis. <laughs> so it just says uh, Presley Birthplace Museum and Chapel. They, and and the, the authorities that are in Tupelo said they have no idea when exactly Elvis was stolen. So I hope they get that back pretty soon. But that's a pretty cool thing to have on your wall. It's a good, it. a good size signature as well, that, isn't it? Oh, crikey, yeah. It's, it's probably, what, a couple of feet high or something like that? Yeah, so they're, so they're looking <clears> for <throat> a sort of 20-foot uh, Elvis checkbook. Um <laughs> Indeed. Uh, that was that was very good. I like that stuff. Um, obviously, we don't condone people stealing property, but it is funny nevertheless. Um, and and finally, from me for this week, the, 
there was a big there was a big thing on the on the television across the world, wasn't there, a couple of weeks ago or a week or so ago, and that was the Friends reunion. Did you see that? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, now I was very pleased to see that's finally you and me now have something in common with a very famous actor in Hollywood, very well known around the world, Matt LeBlanc. Because you did you see the size of him? <laughs> <laughs> So now we are as fat as Matt LeBlanc. Oh, okay, yeah. good that. We've, we've got the lockdown thing going on. So uh... <laughs> so, uh, so here's a word from our sponsor. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, no Elvis connection to that? Um, I did watch the first three or four episodes, uh, see if there was um, any sort of uh, Elvis connection. And apart from uh, Monica saying Rachel has left the building in episode four, um, no, there was nothing else, <laughs> nothing else connected to Elvis whatsoever. And, just, and I'm just going to bring an Elvis connection in it and say they should have had Let's Be Friends uh, as, the, as the theme tune for that show. In, indeed, indeed. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> have, I, have I dug us out of a big hole there? Yeah, well done. <laughs> <laughs> it's staying in. I don't care. I have the power. Right. My news. Um, yes. You know our roving reporter, Olivia. Yes, yes, over in uh, Ohio, is it? Cleveland, yes, Cleveland's finest. Mm-hmm. Well, she, she's just created a brand new human. So oh. we now have a new youngest listener going. Congratulations, Olivia, on your little fella. So, stuff. Well, well, done, well done. Get him listening to the show and indoctrinate him. Come on. There we go. Well he's, done, he's Olivia. Have... If you're not careful with that, you might grow up with a strange English accent by listening to us too much. Yeah. <laughs> cool, blimey, and no mistake. I am, I am. Um, <laughs> yes, well done, Olivia. Very nice to hear. Very, very good. Uh, news and views for me. Um, I, I put a, a, a video up on YouTube mm. that I'd, I'd edited of... Um, and Margaret dancing in a film called The Swinger. Indeed. She's never really looked looked better. Yeah. Um, and I put that up there, you know, it's a, it's a just larking about thing. But I put, um, I put the theme tune. I put the theme tune. No, I put the music of Leave My Woman Alone, the sort of yep. the unreleased uh, mm-hmm. thing on it. And I don't get it. Sixty four thousand views. Wow. <laughs> Cool. When I just, when I just look, what is going on with the world? Um, <laughs> but so thank you very much. And if you'd all like to send me a quid, uh... <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't believe that. It's, it's that's that's really good. It just goes to show that anything Elvis connected yeah. is going to get a look, isn't it? You know, it, it, uh... it is a shame that not one person has said, Well done, Vince, that was edited beautifully. It's all been look at Anne Margaret, I would. Uh, or uh, isn't Elvis the greatest? And so yeah, they, yeah, they weren't yeah. the, the deepest conversations <clears throat> I've had with people, but just the sheer numbers for me on a silly little thing that I threw away. Well, thank you for thank you for watching, and it's always nice to watch that. <laughs> what else have we got here? New new releases and another one of these uh, eight mil um, home movie releases sold out. Volume five. Some nice stuff on these again, if you like that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I do, bit of an anorak. And I've got five volumes of this now, so now lockdown's easing. Next time we're sitting in front of a telly with a bottle of Jameson's for four or five hours, I'll uh, I'll put them all on. That sounds like a plan to me. <laughs> <laughs> so we, easy, we, will, please. <laughs> we will have a look at all that then. This is Henrik Knudsen from the Memphis Mansion in Randers, Denmark, and you are listening to the Talking Elvis podcast. Excellent. So, uh, had had a bit of a, a, a flying solo, had a bit of a guest uh, guest call from uh, US of A the other night, so it was a late one for me, but we, we did it, we got away with it, I managed to, to stay awake, and it was her, her early afternoon, so okay. that was good. Um, we had, do you, does the name Ashley Drew mean anything to you? Oh, the, um, the, the young lady who goes... Graceland, I think, yes. Yeah, there's a lot of snooping. So Gra- yes, uh, Ashley indeed, Drew, yes. uh, what is it, her <clears throat> YouTube channel, The Ashley Drew Adventures. That was the young lady at the start of the show who was asking me not to grill her. So um, <laughs> we met up in the Loving Arms pub, and this is what happened. My guest this week is Ashley Drew. 
I've been going Ashley Wilkes all day, and I've just completely got that wrong. And I've watched Gone with the Wind way too many times. But I suppose it could be worse. I could have been calling you Nancy Drew all day. So uh, <laughs> I came across uh, this f- super fan. Yeah, I'm going to go super fan. Super fan and detective. When I found out she was an Elvis historian and a researcher. So I think in in my world, uh, you know, I, I've never dug too too far deep, but it's great when people do it. Um, so welcome to the show, Ashley Drew. Hi, thank you so much for having me, Ben. Oh, great. I'm so well, excited really, to chat with you. Really been wanting to do this for ages and just, I never get around to it. I'm a little bit bone idle when it comes to that. So, uh, yeah, we've seen you there taking over the internet, taking over the world and oh. and pointing out, which what I like is some weird and wonderful things. You know, it, it isn't just, uh, you know, Elvis's mother was called this and he was called that and I did that, which is a lot of that out there on the internet. And mm-hmm. and, and I get bored silly with that after two seconds. Um, you know, they're just reading Wikipedia to you. Um, right. I right. can do that myself. Right. So, so nice what I've seen, what I like. So that's good. Um, to get you into the show and get the feel of what we're all about, I've got my usual five questions. It's not an interrogation. There are no right answers. Okay. Um, you might say yes or no. You might go and talk for half an hour about it. So obviously, uh, you're going to know the answers are very, very easy. Um, have you ever been to Graceland? And if so, when did you first go? Yes, I have. The first time I went, it was the year 2000. I was 12 years old, and that was the trip that created the monster I am now. <laughs> yes. So were that you was... going just as a, a sort of member of the family, do as you're told sort of thing? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm from California, but my dad moved to Memphis for a year for work, and I would visit on summer breaks and then Christmas breaks and during the summer when I visited it was just something for us to do you know we were just sitting in the house for two weeks and so (laughs) he took me to Graceland and I I just casually knew about Elvis nobody's really like a mega fan in my household but he took me and I've always loved going to museums you know on field trips or whatever and so going there I just I couldn't get enough just listening to uh, back then it was that audio that you hold on to with the headphones yes and just walking through the house just being in the same place where things happened and the house was it just struck me how it was set up as if elvis would just he just stepped out he would come back any yeah. minute and learning so much about him at that time just walking through the house kind of in your own zone with the headphones it was it just changed everything so the next time i went back at christmas i was like first things first let's pick up my suitcase and then we're going straight to to graceland again oh, right. so Kinda before the day before you went the, that first time what music were you listening to was it just current pop charts and, and um, just being a 12 year old like you should be yeah. <laughs> um not i mean not really i guess i i had more unusual tastes um i really liked bonnie raid oh, um a, it's all right. honestly i listened to a lot of what my parents listened to i I wasn't really into what was current. I don't. I didn't really have any kind of favorite, but oh. I didn't really vibe with my friends of what they were listening to. But just kind of. Um, you've given the game away on your age because my next question, oh. which always sorts everybody out, um, is how did you hear the news of Elvis had died? It's obviously not a good question for you. So it's going to um, be, yeah. Uh, yeah. So more of a. Uh, you know, you, you've kind of answered it with, with that same one there of, of your first visit. So I'll yeah. skip that one. My next... negative years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to love this next question. Okay. Do you watch Elvis tribute artists? I do. And I uh, will defend them all day. Oh, excellent. Because I'm the other end of the scale. Right? <laughs> you know, I, I, I can appreciate that. I yeah. totally understand when somebody remembers Elvis. It's just not the same. And I totally sympathize. But for me, I never, I'll never see him live. I never walked the planet at the same time he did. So when somebody is doing what he did, just to hear the music live is pretty special. I just, it's, I don't take it too seriously. I think it's just fun. I know nobody's going to be Elvis and nobody's going to look exactly like him or do anything that he could. It's all I have. I, you know, it's not the same as listening to a record. So it's I, I really it's weird. For, yeah, I think it, it's very weird that I'm so anti 
mm-hmm. Elvis tribute artists. But I would go and see an ABBA tribute band or the Beatles tomorrow. Yeah, what's the difference? Yeah, and I'm I'm a complete hypocrite and proud of it. Okay. <laughs> I know. It, I, I think it is what you. It's what you know. Uh, you know. Yeah. I think it's because I'm. I, I think I've seen so many bad ones, mm. and and I think that's the trouble. It is. If you know, if you put me in a jumpsuit, and I won't play very much, you know, I'm not going to get away with it today. But I think the last 20, 30 years, people were getting away with that. You know, they looked nothing like him. They sounded nothing like him. They put a white sparkly boiler suit on and and kind of got away yeah. with it. So I think it's, it's, it's just guys with black hair. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, and more makeup than you're wearing, probably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I I can understand. There there are different levels. I, I, guess. Think, I think that's it. I mean, you. I do have a standard, but yes. I, just, I think that's the thing. It, think it's fun. The, the the chances of somebody looking and sounding like somebody is mm-hmm. going to be slim, isn't it? You could you. That's a good answer. A good answer. Right off the top of your head, there's only one Elvis song left in the world. Everything oh, else is wiped. What is it? What do you keep? The very first thing I thought of was love letters. I don't know. I'd have to like you know really think about my answer, but that, yeah, no, but that's I like let's go with the heart. That is love letters. Yeah, sixties or seventies version. Sixties. Oh, nice. Yes, I've really got into the seventies one with that last box set. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, the it is, it is an excellent vocal. Okay, you can only have one Elvis film for the rest of your life. What's it going to be? I have a confession. It's very controversial, but <sighs> you're I not gonna, you're not going to be a hair and scare of fan, are you? Oh no, this is we're going a completely different direction. Right. Um besides the documentaries, yeah. I have never seen an Elvis film on purpose. We'll never watch one until everything runs out. Because as I'm researching all this stuff and diving into all these things, he only walked the planet for 42 years. So yeah. I'm always worried that things are gonna run out. <laughs> I'm always worried, like, that's it. Well, like, yeah. you know, we'll pack it up. It's done. And then I'll be like, okay, well, now it's time for the movies. Luckily, Elvis is a gift that keeps on giving. So I'm I'm keeping myself from watching these movies. So I, long story short, I've never seen them. Oh, that is a great answer. I did not see that coming. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, and it's certainly a better answer than saying Harem Scarum. I mean... I, I mean I, Harem I, Scarum, I, yeah. I, I, um... I'm a big fan of honesty with all this. You know, I, I don't look at all these films and think he should have got an Oscar for that. Mm. I look at a lot of these and go, what were you thinking? Uh, and, and and that's fair enough. Sure. Because, you know, and also you look at everybody else's films in the 60s. Martin and Lewis, Doris Day, they were doing the same thing. You know, so you, you can't. Yeah, like you, the, you, the beach you know, yeah, singing. Oh, yeah. And it was yeah. just what was sold at the time. So it, it, it you can't judge them on that. Uh, and I, I do think it's funny that I, I think over the years I've bought them on VHS, Betamax, DVD. Bl- now nice. I'm buying them on Blu-ray. I had them on eight mil and sixteen at one point. I know this is a bit sad, isn't it? Uh, mm-hmm. Well, but but we, we 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 like that. Now the next question is going to be very interesting, and I'll expect photographic evidence. Oh. Do you ever dress up as Elvis? I know I don't. <laughs> no, <laughs> I can I can say that confidently. I do not. Yeah, I I I answered that when I first uh, I asked it because I said sort of, I would never put a jumpsuit on, mm. and then somebody said to me, "Yeah, but in the early eighties, you ha- I, you know I had a quiff a mile long, and I wore mm. the rockabilly clothes, so I, I I have to sort of confess, perhaps I did dress up." Uh, okay. Yeah, so that's good. So well, we know we got we've got a feel of who you are now. Actually, well, okay. When I was sixteen for Halloween, I did dress as Elvis, but that oh. and it's not like something I do in my house. No, yeah, I'm gonna no. say you don't just go down this local shop and <laughs> buy a loaf of bread with a jumpsuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there are people. Uh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> it takes all sorts. So that's great. So I've got a feel of of who you are and what you are and what you do. So how did it come about that you went from twelve year old fan? learning what's what to i'm going to have a, a video show um <laughs> uh there's a i guess this is a long answer uh, yeah. well i've always been you could say curious or nosy <laughs> i like I just i want to know like there's things i just want to know and my my favorite thing is where things happened 
And like, I don't get to, Memphis is about four hours from me. So it's not so easy to just go there and, and see where all these things happened. But I just, I love places where things happened and I want to know. And Graceland was that first taste of that kind of world for me. So my, a lot of my videos are kind of focused on Graceland, but yeah. I want to know like wh what happened, where things happened. I want the, like the meat. I don't want, you know, the, the fluff stories. I just want, I don't know. Yeah, no, that I, think, explains I, I, it. I see what you because, like, you know, if, if there's a, a hotel downtown and he had a, you know, he signed a contract here or something, mm -hmm. then it's great to go and go, so that would have been this lobby and it would have been those steps and it would have yes. been, yeah, that, that I, I can, I can, I can really, the, you know, because I, I, I still do that, you know, when I went to New York, you, you, you know, I've gone to New York for other reasons, but you have to go, right, where's my list of 10 Elvis things to do while I'm here? Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to go and have your picture taken in front of, of these things because you do, don't you? <laughs> yeah, no, no, I definitely. And I, yeah. I feel like walking in his footsteps is so much more fun than just seeing like a statue of him or an exhibit or something like, well, that I love that too. I feel like being in the same place where there's no tourists there. It's yes. so much more fun and like personal. And it's like the it's like all you have that's like the closest thing to being there because I never saw him. So to me, like this is all I have. Yeah, I, 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 you've 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 got to go with that, haven't you? Because this is you know in a hundred years time, everybody will be the same. I, mean, I, I look at it now of of you know the people who were his contemporaries are all are all dropping off the end, aren't they? All oh, the people gosh. who were there. Uh, yeah. and those stories are, are going to the grave now, aren't they? If we yes. don't, if we don't get those stories now, you never will. Exactly. Uh, yes. And and that is that is scary. Yeah. So anybody that preserves anything like that, it's got to be worth it to get a first-hand story. Why we still can, or really use the evidence. So that that is Thank that is nice. So so what do, what what's your aim now? Is it a show a week, a month, a year, or just as and when? For, you mean for the videos yeah. for, on my channel? Yeah, I upload once a week. Yeah. Um, that's that's as much as I can manage at the moment. But um, yeah, just once a week, and then we do a, a live Elvis trivia on my channel every Saturday. I've looked at that, but I've never I've never gone for it. What 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 can we do? Can can anybody come along to that? Yes, it, anybody can play. So we do give out prizes, but I only mail them if you live in in the United States. But overseas fans can get an audio book of their choice. So <laughs> so that's my my prize. Oh, that is for good. Then. No, that's that's nice. Fans. So where, it's where, fun. Do we, it's just... where do we find this then? On on YouTube, Ashley Drew Adventures. You know, youtube.com slash Ashley Drew Adventures. It's really it's become so fun because I just started as a pandemic project but we've been doing it for a year now and it's just it's fun because it's just a lot of just hanging out but trivia is just something and, and it, so are you the quiz master it. i am yes i am the quiz you, master. you've created it all of you so yeah you've you've delved in and what sort of questions are we looking at are, are, are we what color wallpaper was it in <laughs> the jungle room on a tuesday or honestly it... that's what i would like to ask i'm like <laughs> get it right <laughs> what specifically what was it no um initially for the first like maybe eight or nine months it was all just questions i would come up with just 12 questions every week but man that gets really hard to come up with new fresh yeah. ideas every week so i started basing them on individual videos so that way it's more of an equal playing field because i after a year i I can't come up with new questions all the time. So we're now doing questions based on specific videos. So I'm, I guess I'm just quizzing them on that. So yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. Uh, it's just a place to it, hang it, out. It doesn't a test. Yes. Yeah. You, you get a certificate at the end and you pass and you get a, a, yeah, and you graduate. a qualification in Ashley. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Level two, Ashley. That's good. Oh, that, that's nice. Uh, and, it, and, and I think this is what I, I've kind of liked about looking at, at, at what I've seen of your stuff and and a few others of the younger ones is that you're very much with social media. Uh, and I think that the, the fans now are social media fans where I think we were social fans. So we, we had Elvis in pubs, Elvis at bars, Elvis loud music in bars was our world. So mm. we were social that way, but you had to, write a letter you had to make a phone call uh yeah. and you had to use encyclopedias that were paper uh, oh, <laughs> so so you know you you buy a book 
that you know I was buying books in the eighties that were already ten years old. So mm. factually, they were a, a waste of time. Now you know we've 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 superseded all of that. But I think we we were we were social fans, and it's very much a, a social media now. But but it's that I- interaction that I like. I like the the bits where we're getting. Uh, yeah, the idea of a quiz that, that does appeal to me. So we did a little bit of that when we did the radio. Oh, that's good. So, um, what would be your favourite uh, story that you've researched so far? What is your, what is the one that goes down in history? It goes if if the people remember me, it'll be for this. Oh, I like this question. Um, I get okay. I have two two things I'm thinking of. So selfishly, I create a series called Secret Graceland where I just talk about the weird like little nooks and crannies in Graceland because it's the house is such a maze and every time you go you see something new so I do a series where it's just talking about things that have changed over the years or when Elvis was alive this is what this corner looked like things like that that is so fun for me to do and I if I could do all that that's all I would do but if there's one story that I just really like pulls at my heart is the story of Gary Pepper. So I did a story on Gary, who was a longtime Elvis fan. He was confined to a wheelchair. He had cerebral palsy, but he was so driven to be a part of Elvis's world and just run his fan club. And he was doing so much for Elvis and he really couldn't move his hands very well or speak very well. So it's pretty amazing. And I got to interview his nurse who lived with him in the seventies and I just, I love the story of Gary Pepper. I just, I really don't want him to be forgotten. So no. anytime I can share new things about Gary, I I love that. Oh, fly the flag. That is excellent. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm touched there now, yeah? Because it has always been part of the Elvis story. You know, there's always that picture and everybody goes, well, who's he? And then mm. somebody else learns and goes, ah. Oh. Right, yeah. But what, yeah, this is super yes, fun. I feel it? like we are, like Gary is like our, predecessor like he was doing all of this stuff yeah. he was getting so much work done when it was just the mail system and just doing letters and everything i've always wanted to to create and i've never had the time but mm. like a hierarchy of the elvis world uh, and like a family tree and and you know you'd have people like him higher up than other people might think uh you know sort yeah. of in, in the influence and i, I tried drawing it out years ago and it was just sort of oh that's interesting it, it just went really crazy so i was like you know where where would i you know where would I, although vernon's his dad did, yeah but he's also he's mm-hmm. he, you know running the show there but where would you put sam phillips well sam phillips has got to go higher than oh. steve shoals and then and I, I sort of whoa and it blew my mind when i was doing it but i really need to a, a sort of a whole wall and a that's interesting of, yeah, I think there is yeah, a hierarchy. Yeah, you draw that out, send it to me. I'd like to see yeah, that. A yeah, a hierarchy. And uh, and then you, where do you come? Yeah. <laughs> I'm years and years later. I'm just somewhere <laughs> at the bottom, just a little speck. Yeah. A, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far yeah. away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. So um, when I, when you were saying about that type of finding, I like it when I've, I, I've looked at your videos and, and you know you're looking under a cupboard or in a drawer or oh, sticking geez. a camera under a door to see what's the other side. Yes. Um, yeah, naughty but nice. Like I like that idea. Yeah. Um, honestly, I, I I think it was John Daly. I don't know if you know him of the EP Boulevard Pawn Shop. We went through Graceland, okay. and he was like, "Just stick your phone under here." And I was like, "Oh, I get in trouble." And he encouraged <laughs> me to do that. So that was all him. Um, <laughs> But I'm just, like, so nosy. I just want to know, like, what... Like, nobody's looking. It's fine. But I don't want to get banned from Graceland, so... No, oh, I, I try have, 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 have they ever touched at you or thought, oh, she's here again. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, They do have a new sensor in the jungle room. New to me, I guess. Yeah. Because um, before, there's a, there's a clock that you can't see when you're looking out the window at the jungle room and so i was trying to get a picture of it so i stuck my arms out and it was a you know like on a ride at disney they're like keep your hands in the vehicle like it was a voice <laughs> like that that came out i was like keep your hands in the thing and i was like Ew. so my question has to be i haven't been to graceland since 85 which is mm. like a thousand years ago um <laughs> now 
I'm getting a lot of a lot of fans, some who have been for years and some who have only just got into it. And I'm finding this real love it and hate it um, thing going on. I mean, for yeah. me, if they put dancing girls on the front and charge you a million pounds, I'd still have to go because it is what it is. But there are right. keep coming are coming across a lot of people who, and I said the phrase earlier, it's a lot like Disneyland. People are saying, it's it, you know, would would you think I'm going to still be blown away when I go again, or am I, you know, is it too? I know exactly what you're saying, and it's it's the love hate. I totally get it. Um, I've only seen it evolve over the past uh, 21 years, but um, there's there's things that are better, and there's things that some hardcore fans might think is worse. The complex across the street, so you know how those buildings were there in Elvis's time, and then they bought them and changed them into the Elvis Museum? Yeah. And then those were knocked down a few years ago, and now there's this new complex. The complex reminds me a lot of Universal Studios, where it looks like a little tiny town. Yeah. It's got the theater and the whatever so that is like i feel like i am not at graceland i feel like i'm at universal studios or disney uh especially with the disney prices and it's just <laughs> it you feel farther away yeah. where you know i didn't have like that much time with the older museum so i didn't really have that kind of feeling when they were knocked down that some people did but the thing that i do think is better is the car museum because oh, you can walk 360 around the car and get real close to it and look underneath. And I think that's way more personal. And I just, I didn't expect to like that. I'm not really a car person, but the car museum, the way it was before, it was just set up in a certain way where you can just kind of stand back and look at them. Yeah. But it's just so much more personal. So in that way, it is kind of better. Ooh, and also the racquetball building, you know, they took it down and made it look more, it looks just like a racquetball court now, which I prefer. Yeah, so rather than rows and rows of gold records that are just yeah all the all the posthumous awards and yeah, mm. but they they pipe in sounds of racquetball being played in there, which I thought was fun. That's so there's I, some things. Oh well, that's that are, really weird. Yeah, so I've recorded somebody going whack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's like oh. I think it's that's that part's more fun. But if you go across the street, it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'll well, take think, I'll take what I can get though. Yeah, I think that's I think they're definitely. Uh, I mean, I, I looked at it back then that the place is over the road because mm -hmm. they weren't associated officially. They sold any old tat, you know. Oh, you, oh you, right. You wouldn't it, have seen them as the museums. No, no, we we went. They were just. Mm -hmm. It was it was like a British seaside tacky shop, and you'd mm -hmm. have busts of Elvis that you could hardly tell were there and mm. you know furry slippers and furry oh just just tat um but you know we we ate everything up didn't we we just bought put anything and everything if we'd got Elvis on it we'd buy it uh, yeah <laughs> that was great exactly. so so musically do you uh, uh are you a, a downloader or are you a a, a vinyl collector or CDs, which way, which way do you go with the music itself? Um, it's probably embarrassing to say, but I'm I'm a downloader. Yeah, no, because it's I'm I'm just too lazy to like get up and change the record. You know, <laughs> yeah, this way I, I can do, just go on and on. I just that I, I do that. I buy I, I'm terrible. I buy the CD, but then when I'm at work in the office, I've just got it on Spotify because mm. oh, I've just made a playlist. It's easy. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and and I do I do do that. It's a it's a bit it feels naughty, but I know what you mean about <laughs> stream, streaming movies. I hate the thought of having to put the DVD in and oh, press yeah. the button and wait for the menu and get to the first bit. When I'm on Netflix, I'm going right. Carry on where you left off. Thank you very much. So I, I'm torn with that one because I think it's that the convenience. From, the convenience is there, and I think it is the modern way. But I think we've lost any chance now of a full movies box set because they're not the sales wouldn't mm. be there like they would. Right. And I've always wanted the full box set in matching cases mm. with a spine that makes up a, a picture of a Cadillac or something. Mm. Uh, and you'd have, you'd have all 33 movies there. And I think the world's moved on that, you know, that it's never going to happen. I never happen. thought of that. Yeah, yeah. That's not happening. It's no. never going to happen. No. The numbers just aren't there. Are they? They, 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 they wouldn't. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of, a lot of talk about, you know, What's going to happen for on tour 
with you know like a 50 years later sort of thing and mm. and, and you go i'd love to see it all out but would enough people actually buy things anymore um it's, it's a well, scare. If it, yeah if it was some sort of thing where you can pay to stream it then yeah right yeah you see my, my, i've always thought that graceland could could or he, whoever you want to call them could be um have a net a, a sort of their own netflix type of thing with everything mm -hmm. on and you pay seven quid a month and you're happy that uh, would be awesome uh, and they you know and they licensed every movie every tv show and yeah, then they own it all wrote yeah and rotated what they didn't you know so you know but this bit of home movies turned up that's turned up and for an extra quid you can watch it you know a couple of dollars here and there Hey, um, you're on to something. That's cool. Oh, yeah. I, 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 this is weird because this this podcast we do called Talking Elvis, mm -hmm. it, it came from that's what we do. We tended to sit in pubs and we'd always end up, you know, we know better than Graceland. We know better than RCA, <laughs> you know, because we've got the pedigree because, you know, who do, we, yeah. who do we think we are? Uh, but we always come, you know, why didn't this happen? And, of course, money's going to raise its ugly head. Um, but, uh, but that's good. Yeah. So what have we got planned for the future in, in Ashley World? Uh, just are, are, are you world things. domination? Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, after that, um, hopefully I can go to Graceland again. No, <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. Just, I don't really know. Uh, I'm just doing the same old things. That's good. Well, that's what you've got to do. And you're loving it. And it shows that yeah. you love it. You know, this is this is where I keep coming back. That I look at podcasts and I look at things, and it's got to be viewable. It's it's got to entertain me, um, and love it or hate it. Everybody's got a different view. Some are like mm -hmm. our show. Some think I'm weird, but I am. <laughs> but that's They're it. lost. And uh, yeah, I'm weird and proud of it. Um, there you go. But <laughs> that's it. So really, I like the sound of this. So if we want to get into your show. We can do that. We can do the quizzes. Um, yeah. Email you. Yeah. How, do we, how, do, how, how does the great the great public get hold of you? We can write to you. <laughs> yes, they can. They can send all their letters to Ashley Drew Adventures at Gmail. And I'll uh, try my best to write back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it may take ten years, but there you go. What is the best thing about being a fan now and not one 20 years ago, 50 years ago, whatever? Uh, what is the best thing about being a fan in 2021? I love this question. That is such a good question. Um, because I feel like I kind of get some criticism because I'm younger and I never saw Elvis, you know, on. I wasn't alive when he was alive. It's just kind of easier to like dismiss because I'm younger. But I think there is a wealth of information that I have complete access to. I think it's so much easier to be a fan now because I can look up anything. I can search for anything because while Elvis was living, the only information that you had about him was through magazines and newspapers. But now everyone who's ever known him has written a book. There's just so <laughs> much more for you. It's all there. It, it it is everything is there. I, you know, I good or I remember bad, it's there. When I I I remember I had a, a real Iraqi little notebook with every film <laughs> and every everything written in, and I'm going. I haven't seen Change of Habit, and it was years because it hadn't been on the telly. I, I'd missed it at the cinema because I was the mm. wrong age, and you just had to wait. And then somebody showed it at, at a 16 mil print at an Elvis event. And we crammed like 300 people in a room and we just went, wow, we've seen it. But like now you just go, oh, wow, I'll just, yeah, I'll just go and get that. That's it. Or a new bit of footage comes out. You know, there's 20 seconds of Elvis and Johnny Cash. Oh, let's have mm -hmm. a look. There it is. Um, I think it's it's great to have that access, but I really think you miss the thrill of the chase. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally see where you're coming from yeah. because, you know, I just – here I am and all this stuff is available to me. I don't remember a time where things were difficult. Well, I mean, a lot of the things that I, I was trying to learn more about Elvis when the internet was just kind of a baby. So I remember when it was, I would like dream of like, what does the upstairs look like? Yeah. And it was the, you know, years I had to, I never thought I'd get to see it ever, you know, and then pictures surface on the internet, things like that. So I kind of know what you mean, but I can't imagine 
going all those years and wondering like what is this movie like you can't even watch it oh, so it's i do see where you're coming from my final thing's got to be um what will the elvis world be like in 20 years time Ooh. what's your what's your prediction um let's see i don't know i think it i think it will still have the the fervor that it always has but i think things will just be modified i don't think the upstairs will be opened i think a lot no. of people think that but i i just don't think so um i think there will be more maybe interactive things like i would hope at, at graceland there's ways to to connect with elvis and his house that doesn't interfere with his privacy hopefully things yeah. will be like a replica of a room being built so then you can go in there and take pictures and i don't know i think i think younger fans they're going to need still more. Carry the they, torch. They'll still yeah. pick it up. And I think that that's that's right, isn't it? That, that things like um, the the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra mm. revamped mm, um, as far as music it yeah. sort of got got it out there again. I think it's the devil's work, but that's another story. Person, uh, yeah, I don't. I'm like <laughs> he did it fine the first time. I don't. Yeah, see what I, we're I, enhancing, I mean, that, but... to me, that's that's like you just you just saying. Uh, we can do better, mate. Sorry. Um, so I totally I, agree. I, <laughs> but but that was a new way of getting it. I, I was speaking to uh, a big a big wig in the ABBA world, and they were sort of they're coming back with this sort of hologram mm. pulse type concert. So more than the I Royal, see it. I would love that. Yeah, and I think I think that's got to be the way forward with 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 Elvis. I I, I wonder what this agent King. Is going to do because yes. uh, that could I'm not. I'm curious. I would love to see that. And years, you know. the movie coming out next year. I know people are like really. I don't know. I see more criticism of the upcoming Tom Hanks movie than than anything. But I mean, they're making a movie of somebody that's been dead for decades. Like I'll take what I can get. I'm not going to be and, and for me, Tom Hanks can do no wrong. Oh yeah. Yeah. If Tom Hanks is going for this, he doesn't just do rubbish. You know, you know, this isn't Absolutely. just a, this isn't just something to pay the bills for six months. This is going to be top top notch. I hope it, it's more about the colonel than a, than a whitewash sort of you know dancing chickens, funny hat that'll do. Yeah, I I hope it gets a, a bit deeper into um, into. Who I think so, I think so. I I think it will be. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't. What, prefer... what is your view on the colonel? Love him or hate him? Um, I think I just kind of was, you know, fell in line with everybody else with their negative views. But speaking yeah. to John Daly, he explained a lot of things and really he he's a Colonel fan and he helps kind of explain why things were done the way they were and the true facts about stuff. So yeah. he's I don't, the, it was the best. It was the best thing for Elvis ever. And he was. The yeah, worst. I don't. I don't think it was all that negative. Yeah. So and I like, we, we forget, like, Elvis is a big boy. Like, he could handle it himself. Yeah. yeah. No, that's good. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, thank Yay. you for coming along. I didn't want to take all of your time. I, I, hope, that, I hope that that's, uh, that's got the message over to people. And we can, get, we can get them talking about you and get what's going on. This um, was so much fun. Thank you so much I, for asking me. It was, I really I, enjoyed I, your I, questions. This was really so cool. So what did you think I was just, just going to be asking you there? I thought um, I, this would be an interrogation. Yeah. I don't, it's too much like hard work. I tell you, it's me and you sitting in a pub. I've just bought you a gin and tonic. Yeah. And now we're happy. Yeah. We're in yeah. the Looking Arms pub and we've done okay there. Um. <laughs> Have you got any 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 comment, like final comment for the the great the great world out there that you'd like to uh, to share before we go? Um, I don't, I no? don't know. I don't think I have one. Hi, I'm Ashley Drew, and you're listening to Vince on Talking Elvis. <laughs> well, I'm excited. Thank you so much for asking me, and I I love this. This was so much fun, and you made it so like warm and nice, and it wasn't like a a yeah. grilling like it, i thought elvis should be fun elvis should be fun for everybody and and everybody is this is that social world of it you know the first elvis event i ever went to i sat there and uh, in in a great big it was like a nightclub in the afternoon and they were playing elvis i've gone with my brother my brother's just vanished and this stranger comes up and just talks to me and this is the first time i realized that elvis fans are just nice 
and, and it was just that I'm sitting in a bar with a complete stranger, and that's all I want. That's what the whole ethos of this talking Elvis is. It's, it's not trying to compete with you. It's it's not trying to yes. compete with any of these other podcasts. It's a chat in a pub. I love that. I love it. Because, like, there's so much – there's a lot of cattiness in the Elvis oh, world, too. Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I, but... I've um, – I've I, I, I like I like video editing as well, and I've just put uh, about a month ago I edited a video of Anne Margaret dancing, very nice, but that's too, saying too much. <laughs> she, she, uh, 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 dancing from one of her own films, mm-hmm. and when I saw this dancing, and I thought that fits the music of Elvis's "Leave My Woman Alone," although he doesn't. Sing on it, sing on it. So I edited it up, and it's a f- funny little video. And and I can't believe it's you know in a month it's just gone through the roof the amount of, of views. But mm-hmm. I'm getting I'm getting the nasty comments, mm-hmm. and you're going well. Why do you waste? Why do you if you don't like it? Why do you waste your time telling me that I'm a monster? You know. Oh I, yeah. I, you know why? Why would you? Do, why wouldn't you just turn it off and go? That's rubbish, and then just leave it. What what makes the fans have to go? I'm better than you are. I that, that, I, that, I I've pondered that. this a lot myself. You know, I I try to be nice and I try to be professional, but there's always people who will tell you that you suck. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, like if you don't like something, yeah, why fine. Are you I did your it. Time? I thought it was funny. I put it on YouTube. It makes me no money. Uh, you know, it's just a video. It's not. It's not selling anything. It's not doing anybody yeah. any harm. And yet they come in vicious, and you just go. But I would never have that, you know, at, at, at an at an event face to face. Oh, people, that's people yeah, that's a that. huge thing I think yeah. about too. I'm like, you would never say this to my face. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I absolutely. know, but I try to always think like people who try to bring you down are already below you. Yeah. So they're just miserable because nobody who's super excited and celebrating life is going to say something like that. No, no, we're on the same page. Separated at birth and 50 years. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Love not it. that much. I'm putting myself down there. Yeah. So uh, when excellent. are you going to plan your trip to Tennessee? Um, well, we, we were waiting at the moment to see what countries are sort of opening up this year. Yeah. So we we wanted to do June. Um, well, that's what we'd booked for June last year. Um, and I said, my mates are more country fans than Elvis. So the Nashville was the big part of the of it of it for that, uh, and I sort of said, well, if I've gone that close, you've got to go to Memphis. So we're probably looking at next June, but I'm scared to book anything at the moment. I mean, COVID wise, how how is the world outside your window? Are you all masked up and terrified, or what? Well, um, okay, so I'm from California, but I live in Tennessee, so. There, I'm seeing two different things. The country ha- cannot agree on anything. And Tennessee, <laughs> it's more like cowboy culture. They're like, yeah. you can't tell me what to do. So they don't enjoy wearing masks. Where yeah. I'm comfortable wearing a mask, I don't mind. I feel like even if I'm not worried about myself, I feel bad for elderly people that are worried or people that are you know, ill and worried. But people here are very defiant and they don't want to wear a mask. So... In the small, I live in a small town. This people here do not wear masks, but in Nashville itself, you have to. Yeah. So, who um, knows? It's kind of like here's the smoking section. Here's the non-smoking. Like, can we all agree on one thing or no? <laughs> oh, I could talk to you all night. This is fantastic. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. It was like super late your time. No, no, it's not super late. I've done a day's work. I've eaten. I've just had a drink. Uh, you've put me in a very good mood, so yes. I think I'm I'm going to go off and have a a little shot of uh, some Kentucky finest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I join you, but it's like four o'clock. So well, I'll, I'll have one for you. Thank that's, you. It's only fair. Yes. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, <laughs> it's five o'clock somewhere, like the sun. There says. you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Lovely. Thanks for that. I really, really enjoyed talking to you. That's so easy. Thank you. This was it, it. was so much fun, and I really your questions were really cool. I like them. Thank you very much. Like, oh, thank you very much, even. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. This was it. fun. Thanks yeah, for nice. staying up late. Oh, that's that's good. Um, to accommodate. I'll, uh, I'll let you know when it goes out. And uh, now, so. Thank you very much, Ashley. I'm glad you popped in. Uh, I hope everybody uh, gets onto YouTube and has a look 
um, that all your videos there because we need to share this. We need to get all the facts out, get rid of all the rubbish out there, watch the good stuff. Um, you're quite welcome to come back anytime you like if you want to promote anything. Yeah, when you've written your book or you've made your second million, um, then, <laughs> then, 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 then come come on down. The price is right. Uh, I so we'd appreciate be so it. Yeah, we're glad to Thank have you. Thank you. I love this pub. It's so nice. <laughs> Thank you. Ashley Drew, big round of applause. <laughs> Millions of people in here. Uh, they all love you. And uh, we will see you again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Vince. A little more conversation with TalkingElvis.co.uk. Well, doesn't she sound great? Ashley Drew, what a very, very good interview. And I'll tell you what, she's the sort of person who we should go to Graceland with because... If we were to go together, we'd be egging her on, we'd be egging each other on to go and look in that cupboard, look underneath that door, and go and have your photograph taken on the bedroom upstairs. <laughs> I was going to say, go upstairs, go upstairs, go. Quick, no quick. looking, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> that, that was really, really good, really interesting. Um, yeah, well done. Really enjoyed that. I, I, I'm really pleased because I, I, when I asked her on, I, and my initial one was to, to do a talk about just her and what she gets up to in her slice yeah. of the Elvis world and then I wanted some bits for another show about being a fan today a mm -hmm. younger fan mm -hmm. um and I, I I just couldn't split it I just had it just played better as the whole thing yeah and I really like this and I, I've got this whole fresh view of uh, of a younger younger person how how you've not seen a film or you've not bought this one <laughs> yeah. and, and and i suppose i was a little bit judgmental before of of uh, you know when somebody says talking pictures is showing flaming star tomorrow mm. i get i i have this horrible thing of well, well big deal i can watch the dvd now if i yeah. want yeah. and you get a bit snobby don't you if you don't watch yeah. it you really do <laughs> we, we have both done that over the years yeah yeah. Oh, man, but so, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I like the idea that she's saving these movies to watch, you know, later on in in her days. Um, that's that's, and she, and she explained it properly. It wasn't a case of I can't be bothered. It was a case of yeah, I'll watch them, but when I'm ready, you know, that's yeah, fine. I, you know, when there's I, when there's nothing else new to to talk about or to or to have released, you know, that's you know, so so that's interesting. Um, her, her knowledge um, of of uh, Graceland and and Elvis is. It's great. It's easily the sort of person we invite back on the show um, and invite oh, yeah. to our and, and you know and have a drink with in the pub. Um, yes. Well, now I, I bought her a gin and tonic. Now she owes me one. So if you if you're listening, remember, yeah, I did buy you a gin and tonic. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We like to do we like to do rounds. You see. Yes. So, uh, we all take it in turns, actually. So uh, <laughs> please do come back. Yeah. That would be really nice of you. <laughs> And that was great. I know, very good interview. Very, very happy with her. Like what she's doing. I loving this younger view mm. of what we've got. Uh, you know, and mm. uh, we're different. We're different people. We, we're different collectors. We're different types of fans. Yeah. Um, there's room for everybody. Do you know what? At this rate, I'm going to end up saying something nice about an ETA one day, right? Steady now. Steady now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm having a bit of a turn. Oh, oh, I'm having an episode now. I've said that. Oh, dear. Oh, Don't, don't go too quickly. <laughs> Quick nurse the squeens. Uh, <laughs> nurse is out of bed again. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, differing differing points of view is always refreshing, isn't it? Because yeah. uh, we've heard over the years the same stuff being spouted over and over again by lots of different people. We've probably been guilty of it as well in the past. Um, yeah. And and even 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 on this podcast, <laughs> but uh, to have to have that that view of Ashley, like you say, a younger view, uh, good, pers good, perspective, good very 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 good. And um, we, I think we should look her up next time we're in Memphis. Yes, yes. Well, yeah. Well, she lives in Nashville, so I'm supposed to be going soon. Well, soon, you know, one mm. day. Mm. Uh, so yes, you better watch out. There'll be a knock on the door. Yeah, my next trip to America will feature Memphis. So, um, yes, uh, <laughs> you've you've unleashed you've unleashed us now. I'm Unleash sorry. Unleashed the beast. That's it. <laughs> um, any news and views for the what's coming up, or any plans, we, LVC we, wise, for you? Well, we, for me, well, we do have uh, plans uh, in the pipeline. Uh, we are writing, <laughs> sort of, scribbling uh, and, with a wax and, crayon and researching. Um, so, yes, so uh, 
you know, stick with us. We'll get something. We'll sort something out. But uh, me personally, no, I've got no other uh, plans at the moment. So um, I'm enjoying the weather. I'm enjoying the fact that the UK is sun shining, which is which is lovely. So you don't have to try and get on a plane anywhere and go. So straight, you're you yeah. are you basically saying I don't care if the sun don't shine. All I needed was the rain. Something like that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> lead on okay then that's us uh for number 38 i hope you uh enjoyed that uh don't forget you can listen to all of the other podcasts uh from talking elvis uh throughout the last what year and a half uh that we've done so they're all available on spotify or wherever it is you get your podcast from you can also go talkingelvis.co.uk the websites and the uh, episodes are all on there as well so uh, hope you've enjoyed number 38 we'll, we'll, we'll see you for show 39 we're getting closer to that big 4 thank you very much a little more conversation with talkingelvis.co.uk find us at www.talkingelvis.co.uk or Facebook or YouTube or Spotify in fact any place you get your podcasts Thank you.